for, the, for a while it can be helpful, but not to become dependent on either, or to use it as a tool to help you, yes, but don't become dependent on listening to music so that you can be present only when you listen to music. What is music? Somehow it does stop our minds and um, why it is so important to us, maybe about art in general also. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your favorite kind of music? Okay. <laughs> Yes, it certainly stops the conceptual mind, although music exists at different levels. There's some kind of music that very much stimulates the emotions. That's not the mind, but the emotions. Uh, the listening of music can be a wonderful meditation and practicing of music even more so. If you, do you play an instrument? <laughs> but do you listen to music? Yes. What kind? Classical mostly. Classical music, yes, yes. Yes, I, there were several years, I don't know how many, maybe 15 years when I listened to very little music. And um, why? Because the strange thing, I actually said that to somebody at that time who asked me the similar question uh, and I said, no, I don't listen to music much, that was at that time. Why not, she asked. Because it felt to me that all those things like music and art they were all inside me in their, the, the essence of whatever music can express, I could continuously sense, well, I still can, in, well, I can continuously sense inside me. And so I, I can appreciate music, I said to her at the time, but I don't need it. It's like I have the, the cream and everything else is the skimmed milk. But I, even nature I perceived as a skimmed milk. I remember often sitting in nature and in a state of sometimes closing my eyes, I, especially when I was still living in London, I would go on Hampstead Heath every day, sit there on a the bench and close my eyes and such beauty and depth in, of the formless the formless life itself or consciousness and then when I opened my eyes again nature was still very beautiful but it seemed like a diluted version of what I had within or what even what I was within not that there's anything wrong with that it for many people it can be an entry point into that so it can take you into that uh, now then the time came when I started listening to music again as an enjoyment and I do now, perhaps not every day, but from time to time I listen to music um, more recently on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> although the speakers are very small, they're about that size on the side. But um, yes, and I'm, I actually enjoy some of the kind of sp spiritual kind of music, some new age music, some of it is I love very much, some of it can be a little bit tinkly and, and uh, emotional or superficial, but other kinds of new age music I love very much. And um, I found this, this, the other day I found a station, I think oh, Kim found it, it's called Calm Radio. And uh, I believe it may even be Canadian. And Calm Radio has many channels, but it's one station and you can choose the type of music you like and it'll play that like, classical, oriental music, 
om music, healing music, spa music, uh, folk music, classical music, opera, so many channels, just a wonderful. Um, yes, the practice of an instrument also can be a wonderful meditation for many people because it really stops your mind. The important thing, however, it can be helpful, is not for presence to become associated with any particular activity. The activity can be helpful, but at some point you have to see, use it as a help, like playing an instrument, the flute, whatever it may be. If I learned an instrument, I would probably take up the flute. It looks it's a simple thing, although not easy probably to master. This is the, I'm now playing the soundless flute. <laughs> the equivalent of one hand clapping. <laughs> no, not to become dependent on a particular activity so that you can be present. Or that for a while it can be helpful, but not to become dependent on either, or to use it as a tool as to help you, yes. But don't become dependent on listening to music so that you can be present only when you listen to music. Don't become dependent on playing the instrument and, or dancing, beautiful thing too, moving your body. Don't become dependent so that you can only be present when you're actually dancing. Well, at least it's a wonderful thing. You can be present when you dance, but, but it's, you can't dance continuously. Well, unless you regard your whole life as a dance, then it might work. Don't become dependent on climbing a mountain so that you can be present, because if you're not, you fall off. Don't become dependent on driving a fast car. Oh, really present, because so that presence is not bound to up with one particular thing that you do, but nevertheless use those things as helpful ways of bringing you into presence, but then once more presence arises, switch off the music, it doesn't mean you can't switch it on again an hour later or tomorrow, switch off the music. If, if music brings you into presence, the mind is not you're just, there's just the pure act of listening. And you're aware that there's a pure act of listening and you are the consciousness, you know yourself as the consciousness that's listening. Beautiful meditation. And then my next suggestion is switch off the music and continue listening. To, to what? Nothing. So you, when you remove the object of awareness, what, you re, what remains is awareness itself. So this is how it can be a wonderful portal. The same thing, any activity that brings you into presence, once you feel presence is rising, it's there, stop the activity, and just be aware of, the, of presence itself. And then you can carry, if you enjoy it, then carry on doing. But, and then again, step out. So, that's the, so that presence is not bound up with one particular activity, or you can even, you can look at the, you can look at a photo of a spiritual teacher that, who is present to bring you into presence. Ramana Maharshi, there's one particular photo of him that was, is a beautiful photo where you actually truly see, feel the light shining through his eyes and that was where the, the photographer took that photo in 1930 or so and the photographer said, no, Ramana Maharshi said, is there enough light? The photographer said, you are the light. <laughs> And that's a beautiful picture. And the amazing thing, some people have even used pictures of me to, and, look, 
and you look as long as you know you're not looking at a person that's not why you have the photo you're looking at to put you in touch with a particular state of consciousness you're ultimately looking at yourself the essence so then a picture can activate that in you and then the next step is again similar to what I said before close your eyes or remove the picture and continue to feel that that presence so you can use whatever is there to help you but don't become dependent on it whatever it may be use it enjoy it but don't become a pendant so that uh, that then exclusively becomes associated with presence and then you can only be present when you put a little altar with Ramana Maharshi up and then some you but as soon as you go away 